Welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month, we have the new iPhones, Google's fight against the EU, and more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke with Helen Marriott from EY about the use of technology in the retail space. First, though, here's your roundup of the month's biggest tech news. This month, Apple unveiled its latest product range, including iPhone 8 and 8 Plus and iPhone 10. The iPhone 10 costs a thousand pounds, has edge-to-edge -edge display and no home button. Instead, it unlocks using facial recognition software. All three new phones can also be charged wirelessly. Google is making another big buy into smartphone hardware. The company has struck a $1.1 billion deal with Taiwan's HTC to expand its smartphone business. Google will not take a stake in the firm, but some HTC staff will be packing their bags for Silicon Valley. In other Google news, the search giant is fighting the 2.4 billion euro fine it was handed by the EU. Earlier this summer, the European Union found Google guilty of favoring its shopping service in internet searches which it argued meant Google was abusing its market dominance in Europe. Google has said it respectfully disagrees with the EU's decision. Slack has raised $250 million from investors, the majority of it coming from SoftBank's Vision Fund. This latest round puts the WorkChat startup's valuation at $5.1 billion. It was previously valued at 3.8. It's been a turbulent month for Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency's price plummeted more than 20% after the Chinese government said it planned to shut all Bitcoin exchanges. But the price rebounded quickly, hitting $4,000 again, most likely because traders in China are switching to alternate methods of exchange. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topics interview. We spoke with Helen Marriott from EY about the use of technology in retail. Helen, thanks for joining us. Today we're talking about the use of technology in retail space and EY did a report on that. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yes, yeah, sure, I'd be really happy to. So um, at EY we were intrigued um, by the enormous number of returns, um, the rising number of returns in retail um, and set it about doing a piece of primary research to ask consumers about their behaviour and also to ask them about their, um, their attitude towards some of the new technologies which are, which are coming into play. And what were the key findings of that report? So really interesting, so we found that 2.2 out of every 10 garments that are purchased online are returned um, and 78% of those garments are returned because of size or fit issues. Um, which is an enormous issue, obviously, and if I put some numbers around that, um, the size of the returns issue in the UK is around 60 billion sterling each year, of which 20 billion of that are related to online returns. So it's a huge issue. And when we, digged, when we dug into the, um, the analysis, when we analysed the, the findings, we found that there was a particular theme around um, women, sort of young affluent women and their shopping behaviour and if I sort of tell you the story of, of that I think it's quite quite um, illuminating. So we found that particularly for that demographic um, they would buy many different size and colour combinations of a garment, um, have those delivered to home, try them on, see how they looked and what was important to them um, was partly the experience of doing that um, but also getting their look really right. But then when we pressed them, um, they didn't like the inconvenience of having to return. They'd much rather it was right first time in terms of the selection they needed to order um, and then not have to return. Um, so that's quite interesting. And then we sort of asked them about that again. Um, they were really, really open to the use of technology to improve their overall experience. So how can we use technology to combat that problem and reduce the volume of returns? That's a great, great question. And it's a, a sort of an area that's developing really fast. Um, so I think many consumers and, and viewers um, of this will, will have some experience of um, clothing retailers and brands who will often offer a consumer the opportunity to put in their vital statistics um, in, in, a, in a site in order to give them a recommendation of size and there are some retailers who are recommend, sort of recommending or giving style advice aligned with that and some even have an avatar so you can sort of play around with an avatar that may or may not look like you um, and try on some clothes virtually which is all great and it's nice customer experience stuff 
Um, where we see the real value coming, however, is further up the value chain. So if you think of the um, design and make, um, sort of producing the garment process, um, there's technology coming, in fact it's, it's live and it's, it's in part being used now around the 3D pattern um, technology, um, which when it comes to maturity is going to enable us to design a product, have a 3D um, pattern, um, not on paper but digitally, um, and to use that to drive both the design and the make of the initial samples, but also the sort of full production runs. And when you can join that data, the data about the products, and not just the product size or the garment size, but how that, how that garment and the fabric in the garment flows, and provide that to a consumer when they're shopping online, that starts to be really exciting and worthwhile for the consumer. That sounds really valuable and useful for retailers. So when will we see a mainstream adoption of this? So things are moving quickly and I think I mentioned that earlier. I think what we see is there are many, many solutions, hundreds of solutions that we uncovered in doing our scan, all at very different levels of maturity, um, a lot of investment um, and also very early stage startups as well as businesses starting to scale. So all of the technology I've alluded to today exists. Um, I think the, the, the question is how quickly will that be adopted um, in a difficult retail economic environment um, and how quickly will that become sort of the way, the way business is done and I think our view is that within 10 years we'll be looking at a really diff different end-to-end -end supply chain and customer experience. Thank you for sharing that insight. Thanks Ruth. That's it for this episode. For more of the latest top tech headlines, head to uktech.news.